This list is based on the Mandalorians in Legends only. I considered each character's influence, galaxy-wide impact, battle IQ, and combat prowess when compiling this list. Antos Wyrick, formerly an Iskaloni slave on the planet Iskdrel, was one of the many who were set free after Mandalore the Indomitable invaded the planet. Wyrick would subsequently join the Mandalorians and work for them as a scientist after killing their slavers. The Wyrick's illicit scientific study centred on the attempts to produce an army of force sensitive Mandalorian knights using the DNA of a Jedi named Arka Jeth. It turned out that he was no better than his previous slavers. Wyrick was so thirsty for success that he even sold his own daughter, Shantique, to the Crucible, a slave trading business, under the new guise of Dr. Damagol, also known as the Mad Scientist of Mandalore. He would then have to leave his made-up school on Osidia and rejoin the Mandalorian people. By dissecting captive Jedi on the asteroid base known as Flashpoint Station, Demigol would carry on his never-ending research to nullify and or recreate force powers for his Mandalorian knights. Later, this lab would be destroyed by a former Jedi Padawan, Zane Karek, working alongside his acquaintances, the Mandalorian deserter, Roland Dyer and Jaril. Demigol, however, managed to disable Dyer amid the turmoil of the nearby conflict and pass himself off as him for several months. Fortunately, Demigol's deception would be exposed, and he would be killed battling his daughter. Demigol made repeated attempts to establish his Mandalorian knights but failed. Interestingly, a few centuries later, Tara Vizsla, a real force sensitive Mandalorian, would be born. An important figure in the terrible Mandalorian Wars was the ancestor of Django and Boba Vett. As Mandalore the Ultimate's aide de camp, Vett was in charge of transforming the Mandalorians from a savage tribe of world conquerors to a more cohesive and effective war machine. To do this, Vett drew inspiration from the Neo Crusaders, a Mandalorian sect that employed a specialised form of armour, a structure of command and a division of labour. To improve rank distinction, Vet developed cult systems by colour coding their armours. The lowest ranks wore blue, then red, then gold for those of the greatest rank, which included himself. Additionally, Vet moved Mandalorians from being only world conquerors to incorporating laws that had fought into their way of life. Vet contributed to the transformation of the Mandalorians into a group that could compete with the Republic by putting these improvements into place. One of the most outstanding members of his people to become Mandalore was the Mandalorian mercenary Aga Awad. After being compelled to act against the ravages of sickness and rapturous raids that had left his homeworld in ruins, he began the path to become Mandalore. His frustrations back to the commencement of the Return Movement, which saw Mandalorians from all around the galaxy reunited on their ancestral planet. Not only did the Manto Age relationship become stronger as a result of the reunification of the shared culture, but it also signalled the start of an extraordinary rise in affluence. Awad was renowned to his people as Mandalore the Uniter for his role in the resurgence. Among the Sith Lords and Darth Malgus led Empire forces, Shay Vizsla, also known as Mandalore the Avenger, a Mandalorian woman stormed the Jedi Temple. She was also a Mandalore in people and she made significant contribution to the development of Star Wars mythology and galactic history. She was a formidable fighter who frequently engaged in combat with lightsaber users, force sensitives, strong Mandalorian mercenaries, bounty hunters and rivals for her position. She was undoubtedly a formidable opponent. Artus Locke, a former bounty hunter, rose to power as Mandalore the Vindicated the future Mandalore. He was a dark-skinned male human wearing a thick suit of crimson gold and helmet and dorsal fin crested armour. Mandalore the Vindicated attempted to unite the Mandalorian clans but encountered opposition from Jinklin Kadera, a former friend who wanted the Mandalorians to side with the Republic rather than Sith Empire. According to legend, a galactic cold war broke out between major powers of the galaxy during this time. The invasion of a fresh danger known as the Eternal Empire, commanded by a former Sith Emperor by the name of Zakul, however, quickly ended this. The Republic, Sith and Mandalorian armies joined together to fight this opposing faction because they sought total domination over all others. Sadly, 
Magdo the Vindicated would fall victim to this new danger once the Eternal Empire's droid army of Sky Troopers invaded his world. Mandalore the Lesser The reason for his title is that this Mandalore is one of the few of his type to be regarded with contempt. He was a Geonosian gladiator before he became Mandalore, and the Sith Empire was serendipitously rigging his victories. They interfered because they wanted to use him as their own personal pawn to enlist the help of more Mandalorians in order to break the deadlock they were experiencing with the Republic forces. He then utilised his position of power as Mandalore's ruler to bring his people back together in the Sith's service. When he held a blockade over the Hydean Way, an important trade route, his alliance with the Sith proved advantageous. This Mandalore advocated for the reintroduction of the Great Hunt, an antiquated tournament in an effort to inspire his fellow Mandalorians and garner support for himself. However, Artus Locke, the competition's grand champion, shot him to death after he challenged him for the title of Mandalore. This resulted in his removal of power. After this victory, the former Mandalore's title was reduced to that of the lesser, and the real circumstances surrounding his ascent to power were revealed. Revan, the Jedi who vanquished the previous Mandalore and assumed his due place as ruler, instead gave the Kybers to Kandra's Ordor, an old ally. This Mandalore was notable in Mandalorian history because he was the first non tog to wear the Kybers and the first human to do so. As Mandalore the Preserver, he also assisted in bringing his people together after the Mandalorian Wars had left them dispersed throughout the galaxy. The Republic received assistance from the Preserver, the first Mandalore to do so, in their fight against the Sith Triumvirate. A vision of the planet Shogun inspired this new leader, a forerunner of Mandalore, to reject his religion of a trinity of gods in favour of worshipping battle itself. In essence, the epiphany of Mandalore the Indomitable made war and those who fought it divine. Thus, just as they had done before with the Mandalorian Mythosaurs, his crusaders were inspired by religious favour to assault other planets and destroy their dominant species. Later, once the Mandalore arrived to take the Sith's dominion, the Indomitable and his crusaders engaged in combat with a Sith Lord by the name of Ulsic Queldromna. Using just Mythosaur axes, the Mandalore challenged the Sith Lord to a duel, but was outmatched by the other due to his superior combat abilities. The Sith decided to spare the life of the defeated Mandalore, rather than killing him as he demanded. The Indomitable afterwards vowed allegiance to his new ally and took on the roles of general and advisor for the Sith. The first Mandalorian ruler, Mandalore I, led his people to the planet that would later bore his name. The Mythosaurs, the planet's top predators, were subdued by Mandalore I who made a helmet out of one of their carcasses. The Mythosaur Skull helmet was adopted by the Mandalorians as a mark of strength to identify their leaders. The strongest and most potent Mandalorian of all time is without a doubt this one. Legendary Mandalore the Ultimate brought together all of his civilization and the remnants of the nearly extinct species, the Tog. One of the last Tog to rule his people, Mandalore the Ultimate was a lone responsibility for ensuring that the Mando ways and their rich cultural legacy survived. He rallied his people despite being greatly outnumbered and in a weak position to lead them in a heroic assault of the Republic. The invasion was nearly successful until he encountered Revan, who murdered him in a titanic duel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe. Until the next time on Star Wars Invader.